What's up guys, Shane here with 3D Printing and we need to talk. So for those of you out there purchasing the Forgetech FT5 and you're looking to do upgrades, I fully support you doing upgrades to your system and I really think you should because it is an excellent starting point. But that being said, the FT5 is a starting point and you need to start at that starting point first, if you get what I'm saying here. There are so many people today, I mean literally five, six people per day post about, hey, I just ordered the FT5, I'm so excited, what are the, all the upgrades I can do? No, stop now. I understand you want to research, but that doesn't actually stop most people. They just get on Amazon and buy, buy, buy. Stop, just, it is so, it's just so frustrating to see other people that are gonna hit a wall really, really soon because you're not taking time with the printer. I strongly recommend, and I've said this time and time again, and now I need to do a video just because to explain this more. So please, build the printer stock first. That way you can see what it's doing. So let's take a look at my printer here, okay? Okay, so here's my FT5, okay? It is pretty stock. There's not a whole lot going on. So I did on some magnet bars there. I have a Bowden PTFE tube going in there. It is a Titan with an E3D V6 and a Volcano, depending on which setup I'm doing. And I added some enclosure, some uh, foam board around it. A couple little accessories. This is for my glue stick. What we got over here? Here's my my own made, what's called, filament spool holder deal. Raspberry Pi mount on the side. Here's the Bowden tube comes out and my camera for the Raspberry Pi mounts up here, but it's just not on there right now. Anyways, fairly stock printer, okay? Oh, and I have a silicon heat pad because I have one of the older versions. I have the version two heated bed, which sucks. And well, it works for PLA, but if you wanna do anything higher like PETG, you need to upgrade. But for the new beds, you're fine. Just I have a very old bed, so that's why I upgraded mine. But I ran this thing for six months before I did my first upgrade. I got fantastic prints off of it. And actually we could probably look at one just so you could kind of see the quality that you're gonna get. So I understand this is low poly, but this is my gigantic Pikachu. You see I'll be staring my hand. This is my low poly Pikachu. If you look here, he looks pretty damn nice. Even the eyes had great bridging in there. Bottom layer, like glass. You know, a little bit of issues there on the underbelly, but this is a hollow print, okay? He's completely hollow and huge. You don't need all these upgrades to print well with this machine. You just need to tune it. Once it's tuned, you're golden. You can print for months on this machine the way it is. I understand there's the big argument here about the uh, aluminum corners. Now, if you look at mine, actually let's pull one out so you can see it. Okay, so this thing has been built since July of 2016, okay? And I don't do a lot of changes to it unless I have to. Now, let's look here. We're gonna pull this out. Okay, look at that divot. Let's see if I can zoom in here, this will work. Ooh, okay. Look at that, it is barely even dented. Do not over tighten the wood parts. I don't know how to explain it, but it doesn't need to be hulkanized. You know, you don't gotta be Hercules to get this thing to be tight. My printer is extremely tight. I get excellent prints. I actually get so many people that hit me up that ask me how they can print as well as I do, and I don't even think I have the best prints out there. Let me get this back on there. Look, hand tight, done. That's it, stop. Do not over tighten the melanin parts. Just stop. Let's go back to me. So you see, I haven't done a ton of my printer. I've done a few things. There's LED bars on there. That's not really an upgrade. That's just because I do video. I'm a YouTuber, so I need to be able to see, I need you to be able to see the things I'm printing on it, which I turn those on. A lot of people ask about those. There they are, you know, it's just a six set of LED bars uh, under under cabinet kitchen lights things. So, 
Anyways, you don't have to do crazy things with this printer to get good prints. So I want everyone just to flush that out of your mind right now. If you want to upgrade, by all means, please do it. This is a excellent printer. Anything built on 2020 limited extrusion is just a stepping stone for greatness. It really is. And the build, the quality of the parts, okay, you can have bad parts. That happens. Well, it's a small company. Get over it. Know what you're buying. If you don't like it, return the printer. Please, just return it right now. I don't work for Folger Tech. I don't support Folger Tech. They don't, and they don't give me any money for anything, nothing. I like the printer. If you don't, then just get rid of it. It's not for you. If this is your first printer, please buy it, build it stock, and stop. After four, six months, after you figure out what you need to upgrade, not what everyone else is doing, what you need to upgrade the printer, then please upgrade away. If you want to be out touch, do it. If you want to do an inductive sensor, do it. If you want to do a proximity sensor, do it. A relay switch, do it. Whatever you want to do, that's fine and dandy. But you need to learn the printer first. And actually, I will say the worst people that are to upgrading this printer are the uh, engineers, I'll call people. So not to call anybody out, but I am. Y'all need to just chill because you're putting out false information or you're putting out too much information that people don't need yet. And that is where a lot of the newbies really get, sorry, I'm gonna call people newbies. That's where a lot of the newbies really have issues because like, oh, this guy's doing this, this guy's doing that, he's making these, he's making that, and he's doing all this amazingness. You get good prints off the stock printer if you take the time and dial it in. If you don't, you shouldn't be 3D printing, period. Go away, You. this is not the hobby for you if you cannot take the time to do it properly. 3D printing is a very frustrating uh, hobby. Trust me, <laughs> I have so many issues, but I work through them, I take my time, I ask the proper questions. Please ask questions. That's why everyone's here, that's why I do YouTube, is for people to ask me questions. I answer tons of questions every day via YouTube, via messages on comments or just messages in there, messages on my Facebook page, messages to my personal page, people tagging me in Facebook groups, I'm more than happy to help people out. But I just wanna be sure that people are actually taking the time to learn what they're buying and not just throwing a bunch of, you know, it's a $500 printer. Don't throw $500 more at it and expect it to be amazing. It's not going to be if you can't print properly. And more so, if you can't even slice properly, stop. You need to learn how to slice properly. You need to learn how to do proper shells, proper first layers. Just because you throw an E3D V6 and a Titan on it does not mean you're gonna get magical first layers. No, 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 no. If you get magical first layers with the stock MK9 extruder, you then know, you then have the skill to get magic nice first layers with the Titan and E3D V6. And then to upgrade to larger nozzles to do one millimeter, that would be cool if some of you guys are doing that. I have the nozzle, but I haven't done it yet. But once you learn the basics, you can then expand from there. So all I'm asking is that you, this doesn't just go for the FT5. This really goes for any 3D printer. So down here, my GTEx down there, okay, it's giving me issues. But I printed with that for close to eight months before I did my first upgrade. And that, I learned the printer, I knew its limitations, I know what it needed. There was uh, the anti-Z wobble I needed right away because that's just an issue with that printer with the i3 style printers. Not just that one, but most of them. Anyways, off topic on that. But I built it stock. I learned from it. I learned what I needed to upgrade it, which was the Z wobble. I did that. I learned more upgrades over time than I needed. And then eventually I upgraded to an E3D V6 clone and a Titan clone. But I learned, I took my time. That's all I'm asking is that you take your time, learn the printer that you're buying, whether it's the FT5, an i3, anything you're buying, learn the hardware, understand what you're upgrading before, especially if you're the first printer. Don't throw money at it, please. I'm repeating myself here on this now. Stop throwing money at printers. They don't get better with money, period. I will outprint people with a stock FT5 than whatever else they have, bar none. Guarantee it, I will outprint people because I understand the printer, I understand the settings, and I've worked really hard to understand those settings. You know, not bragging, but I worked my ass off to figure these out, and I encourage you to do so as well. So, I appreciate you guys listening to this rant. 
And I really think it was necessary to kind of put out some of the myths, to understand what you're buying, to understand what you need to do for your own upgrades and not what everyone else is doing. Don't listen to what everyone else is doing. Don't jump on Metal Bracket bandwagon. Don't jump on BL Touch bandwagon. Don't touch. Don't jump on the E3D V6 and Titan bandwagon until you understand what it is you're upgrading and why you need to do it or why you think you need to do it. That's all I ask. So, you guys are awesome. I hope you learned something from this and I hope this demystifies some things out there. And if I bashed you, I do apologize, but it had to be done eventually. So, as always guys, happy printing.